Hey guys, Bitter Steel here, back with another video. All right, Iron Man mode on and historical AI focuses on. Let's go. Ah, Iran, beautiful country. Let's get rid of the army to start. And we'll queue up one cavalry brigade for future use. Don't set a location. We'll keep this in the queue for as long as we can. As for research, nothing really fancy here. A few things to note is that uh, where are we? Paratroopers might be handy. And you might want to start on doctrine early. It's just your regular basics. Right, uh, the setup. A neat trick here will be to maximize our air wing size to 1000 because we will be getting a lot of free airplanes from our dear friends in other countries and uh, this way we'll have a deficit and they'll be willing to send us stuff uh, just keep splitting off air wings of 100 every time one of these two fills up just so that there's always that one big air wing that you can keep piling foreign equipment into as for construction uh military factory in tehran and that's about it we'll, we'll build more military factories after usually just build mills focuses political efforts and we trade for steel with our dear friends in germany all right let's go oh uh, and, and production, well, you know, not, not much to be changed here. Now, this may be controversial, but I'm actually going to um, prioritize building some close air support first, followed up with a bit of artillery after. I don't need that many guns. Well, I, I do need many, many guns, but I don't need to make all those guns. See what I mean? You'll see what I mean. All right, uh, we've got our political effort, and we'll now pick industrial effort and go all the way down to the extra research sl slot. That is going to be very handy. Our first PP pick hey, hey, pp will be the fascist demagogue for obvious reasons now we're waiting for the brown party here to reach 10 percent popularity so we can prepare for a civil conflict very very important but we have time we're also taking a not very traditional approach to the civil war here we'll see i'll show you i am going concentrated i want the few factories that we have to pump out as much equipment as possible eventually all right, we've got 10% support for the Brown Party, which means we will prepare for civil war. But if we do it now, we'll be very weak and we'll be fighting a rather difficult civil war since uh, the way the equipment is going to be divided is not going to be in our favor and neither is the way that the country is going to split. It's a lot of victory points. We can't just rush it with a single cavalry division. So we're going to delay things a little bit to come out of this stronger. Step one, expand civil support. Step two, expand military support. Now we wait 30 days for step three 12 seconds later 30 days have passed we are below 50 percent stability so in theory we could ignite civil war now but we're not going to we are going to hit this button siphon equipment twice what this is going to do is take a thousand infantry equipment out of our stockpile and put it away and when we then do fire the civil war that 1000 equipment will be returned to our faction and the other faction will have nothing making the entire civil war very trivial so we've clicked it once now we wait for another 50 political power to click it twice and that should be our entire stockpile or most of our stockpile gone and without guns the loyalists will have a hard time deploying units perfect all right we click the button again siphon equipment and the next 50 pp will be spent on starting the actual conflict. Ignite civil war. Ah, we seem to have been cut down the middle. We'll take our one division that we had queued up. I'll deploy it here next to Karai. Force deploy. Add a few more to the queue. Realistically, we'll only get these two out, but uh, yeah, you'll see. And again, then turn off the location once again. We need to deploy these where it is most optimal. Assign these to a general and let an hour take by. Well, a few hours. And just manually walk it through the victory points. We're gonna head to Sanadai and then head south into if Isfahan, ya Yazd. Anyway, <clears throat> so yeah, just, just cut across here, head south. The victory points up here we can take at a later date. Uh, they won't be able to spawn any infantry there because they are cut off from the capital. Before I forget, I almost forgot, we are gonna talk to the Italians now and we are gonna get a non-aggression pact. Why specifically the Italians? They have this here, where is it? This here, acceptance of fascist diplomacy. They are much more likely to uh, you know, wanna talk to us, ask for military access. And with that, we can now request Lend-Lease. They agreed, obviously. And what we're going to ask is for guns and planes. To make sure they are very willing to give us guns, we're going to maximize our deficit. We're now lacking 11,000 guns and almost a thousand airplanes each. Request Lend-Lease guns. Yes, they will accept that. And airplanes. They will not give us fighters. They will give us close air support. Perfect. And send the request. And it broke, so we'll do it again. There you go. 
So not that much equipment, probably because I was late. I, I almost forgot. And they are, yeah, they're, they're sending a lot of equipment to the um, nationalists. What's to be expected? So yeah, you want to be quick about that. Also, might as well just deploy the airplanes. Could do that with Germany as well, but you need to improve the relations first up to like 45, 35, not sure, I think 40-ish. And yeah, we just don't have the political power for that. So yeah, they managed to spawn one division and that's all they'll be able to deploy. I don't even think they have a military factory. No, they don't even have a military factory. Okay, so the extra divisions also have 20%. So we'll deploy one up here in Gilan, assign that to the army. And this one can capture these victory points and we'll deploy the last one that we can up here in the corner above Birjant. Just force the it, assign it to the army and just walk down to these victory points. So Birjand and the one Iran Shar. Now we're going to take our time doing this. It's going to take about 30 days for the Italian equipment to arrive. 22 days. What we want is to get it twice. So get this shipment in and then ask for another shipment. Once they've agreed to send the second shipment, you can close the civil war. The shipment will still arrive. Three, two, three. One at any time now. Are we close to capitulate? Ooh, we're getting close to capitulating them, so might want to halt this guy. Yeah, I just don't want to capitulate them before I can ask the second shipment. All right, they've sent their stuff. As you can see, it's now a very small amount that they'd be sending monthly. Cancel the lend lease. Request a new one. Again, guns, yes. Fighters, no. Close air support, yes. Always check whatever they'll send you. Uh, be it guns, toy artillery, fighters, uh, casts, anything, anything at all. Just ask and if they have equipment, they'll give it to you. There, another thousand guns and eight casts. Now we can end this. Ooh, they're already close to Tehran. <laughs> yeah. There we go, it's over. Uh, I was a little slow on that. Lost our one factory there, but I, I don't think it ended up affecting efficiency. No, all right, focus, just keep going. That is the reason why we delay the civil war, to make it just a little bit easier. You can see this is gonna be difficult if you only have the equipment for one, maybe two divisions, and the enemy can deploy the same amount of units. Uh, this way, we do start the whole thing with a bit of an edge. Now, let's get rid of all those units and get rid of everything in the queue. We'll follow that up by training as many infantry to divisions as we can and we'll deploy them along the Iraqi border. Construction. Ah, damn. This is what got ruined though. I was too slow because of that initial delay. They captured Tehran and the construction of that one military factory got cancelled. It was probably almost done as well. So that was a gigantic waste on my part. My bad. My bad. So we'll have to start that up. Um, in your game, if you're not as stupid as me, this would almost be done and you'd be following it up with two air bases in Tibriz, which we'll now have to prioritize, and then just build um, military factories in your highest infrastructure provinces. So yeah, I'll have to start with the airplanes and then rebuild in Tehran. God, I'm an idiot sometimes. All right, now let's keep going until we have 62 political power so we can justify on our neighbor Iraq. God, I do feel like an idiot over that military factory. That might end up costing us in the long run. So yeah, don't be like me. Do that right. Okay, 67, that's fine. Justify on whatever. Now we are going to save up for another 65 political power. No, 71 total. And we will justify on Turkey. Don't worry about the Romanian guarantee. That is as expected. That's actually a good thing. Now, in theory, we could wait for this justification to finish and then start up a justification on Turkey. Problem with that is Ataturk. Ataturk will at some point in about a year's time have a chance of being replaced. And Turkey can replace him with one of two candidates. One is the military dictator. I keep forgetting his name. And the other is Ismet Inonu. Most of the time on historical, they will pick Inonu. And if they do that, you're screwed because he has a modifier that makes it 200% more expensive and makes it take 200% longer for justification on Turkey. So you see, we kind of want to beat that, which is why we are going to do a double justification on both Iraq and Turkey at the same time. But the Iraqi one will finish first, so we'll have all the time in the world to deal with the Iraqis. Don't worry about it. Don't worry, it's fine. It's fine. Also, at this point, might want to improve relations with the Germans, might even want to join the Axis, but I prefer not to. If you join a faction, the way world tension and threat generation works gets kind of iffy, and I'd rather avoid uh, the risk of an allied guarantee on Turkey or Iraq. So I'll just improve relations with them a little bit until it gets over the threshold for Lend-Lease, and that's it. I'll join them later when I have to, not now. 
You can see the uh, Italian equipment is coming in nicely. Just wish they'd sent us more guns. If I wasn't so slow, they probably would have sent more, but they already had a large shipment going to Nationalist Spain and the Spanish. All right, uh, first divisions are popping up. Simply assign them to the Iraqi border. Anything new goes to that army. Same general as before, nothing fancy. As for the airplanes, take them out of Tehran, move them to Tabriz and put them over the Middle East. You will need the air cover. Why? Well, this is what we have to work with. G garbage, oh, garbage templates. Uh, the upside is Iraq has the same garbage templates. So we'll be fighting on eh, equal footing, more or less. Now, very important, the Sadabat Pact. I know, I know. You want that 120 political power. It's so juicy, you can just taste it. You need it. You want it. But it comes attached with a non-aggression pact with Turkey. We don't want that. So, alas, we are not kin Turkey. We do not know you. We'll just take the base war support. I know, I know. It doesn't feel right, but sacrifices have to be made for the Persian Empire. All right, 71 political power. We'll now justify on... No, I need 72. Damn you. So we'll now justify on the Turks. And again, this is just to avoid us getting screwed by them picking the wrong leader at the wrong time. Build up the army some more. I, I'm just really bummed out about that factory. Should have been done by now. Oh well. I'll take construction effort now, since we do have 200 days, and then work on the armament effort. The sooner you get the civil factories, the, the more good they do in the long run. Speaking of more good, I'll start on superior firepower. I'm not gonna do anything fancy with mobile warfare in this run, though it is fun and funny. And I'm also gonna start improving our uh, infantry equipment, just so we, you know, we, we have a good shot at taking out Iraq, since we are fairly matched in terms of strength and it's not exactly ideal to push through this um, this terrain with all the rivers and the deserts and the mountains you know it hurts every time I look at my production tab you know that one factory could have had two factories by now oh, I'm an idiot I'm such an idiot so I've got my construction effort now for the armament effort uh, we got time we're halfway there all right 150 BP that took a while let's ramp up to a war economy uh, manpower is gonna be tight soon, but I don't think I need limited conscription yet. I can always go down to the nationalist route and pick up militarism, military youth, or more. Manpower, I think we have time for that. Uh, not for the Iraqi war, but it's never really costly. Mostly for the Turkish and beyond. Rather get the industry pumping, so war economy first. And yes, I have a small tungsten deficit. I'm not gonna throw a civilian factory away for that just yet. I'll just start making some toad artillery at a deficit. It's fine, it's fine. Let's take another look here. Yep, world tension's still too low. So no guarantees on Iraq, no guarantees on Turkey. Let's keep going. Well, Romania, but don't worry about that. We'll, we'll show you a neat trick in a bit. All right, we're making airplanes now as well. Uh, maybe I should start importing some aluminum and rubber because I'm not really efficient. Yeah, I'm taking a 10% efficiency hit. That's not huge. Yeah, I can wait. I think I can wait. I'd rather build a few more military factories first. It does annoy me though to see that here. And I do know if I click it away, I'll forget about it completely. So I'll, I'll address this later. All right, we're approaching go time. Uh, Germans still like us well enough. Italians like us well enough. That's fine. I could also get... Uh, uh, opinion of the Japanese up it tends to pay off. Yeah, why not just improve relations? I'm not gonna join the faction though could get some China memes in but nah. All right, it's go time for Iraq. So we'll simply declare war. Nobody else is gonna get involved. Just leave the game paused for a bit uh, Let's check out our stockpiles first. Yeah, I want to make a bigger deficit So queue up as many divisions as possible again and start talking to our new friends request lend lease from the Italians Germany same thing and The Japanese the Japanese are even willing again infantry equipment close air. Oh, no close air, but they will send fighters perfect it's not a huge amount, but this will increase as these countries build more. Italy is still recovering from its mess in Ethiopia and its volunteers in uh, Spain. Japan is wasting gigantic mountains of equipment in China, but they'll still send you whatever they can. And Germany currently only has a little bit of stuff in terms of infantry equipment because they are building up so they can do Anschluss and Sudetenland. So once those things are all done, Germany and Italy tends to send you very large amounts of equipment. And even small amounts of equipment help. 
Right, as for this, you could cheese the line here by drawing uh, a fallback line like this uh, and try to bait this unit into walking into this tile and then encircle it from here. I've tried this many, many times. The AI just doesn't want to. It, it keeps charging you in random positions. It's fine. We got 11 divisions. This is more than enough to take on Iraq. We'll just, we'll just deal with it. Just slow the game down. Eh, it's gonna be fine. Easiest place to break the line is actually through here. So attack this position from three sides and go for the immediate encirclement of this division and that already should give you a pretty big gap to work with. And just let them attack you in the other places. Doesn't even look like the AI wants to right now. And our air power goes up and that should give us all the strength we need to defeat these divisions. And as far as the Lindley's goes, just every time you get a shipment, cancel it, request a new shipment. Milk those big boys for everything they've got. I'm here, might as well do war propaganda. It may not be ideal, but I'd like to get war support and stability up. Rather sooner than later, really. Alright, first division here is defeated. Now to prevent reinforcements, I'm just gonna pin those two on the flanks and keep pushing. Exploit the gaps for all they're worth. Uh, we need to make this go fast because we have about 110 days before the justification on Turkey finishes. Like I said before, you could risk um, delaying the justification on Iraq. In this case, it would have worked out. Uh, they still have Kemal Ataturk in place, so we could justify now, giving us more time to prepare. But I've had runs where this just didn't work and by this time they would already have this guy replaced with Ismet Inonu, leading to justifications that would take well over 600 days. So this is why we're taking a bit of a risky approach. And yes, I know this doesn't look pretty. I'm really not at the top of my game here, so this is one mistake after the other, but just snake your way to the victory points. The, the Iraqis don't have the uh, troops required to keep this really from spiraling out of control. You should be able to get enough troops to do what needs to be done. So capture victory points, create encirclements. Don't even need to close the pockets though, though it, it's always a little cleaner to do so. Should be able to get some nice snakes. Oh! Six hours later. We've got everything. It's just gonna be a matter of taking Mosul here and Basra to the south. That should be it. The Iraq has capitulated, giving us all their stuff, and we'll simply take all states and be done with it. There. Now we line up these boys on the Turkish border, draw a line here. Very ambitious line, but still. And anything fresh is going to be deployed here. Now, for Turkey, my strategy is going to rely heavily on Cass killing the enemy. Just letting the Turks run into our lines. This is all mountains and deserts, so except for this plain style here. So I just let the Turks march into my lines, take massive casualties, and I push back once they get weak. What you could also do is, at the start, take the naval effort. So don't delay this. Take this as your first or as, maybe take this as your second uh, focus. Start making really, really cheap submarines. So just the cheapest one you can get away with and prepare a naval invasion from Kuzetstan or the Turkish army is all gonna be focused on this border. I just invade this tile with a bunch of absurdly cheap cavalry brigades. So just just the one cavalry battalion here. Just make as many of those as you can. Land here and just cut the country in half. Cut these guys off from the capital. Let them starve and snake your way to victory points. I'm not gonna do that because, well, one... Didn't feel like doing it, and two, I think it's a bit cheesy, but uh, yeah, it, it could work for you if you're uh, that kind of person. Anyway, on to Turkey. I'm gonna take collectivist ethos and rush down to militarism and military youth just to pick up some manpower because boy, we are out of manpower. Might also be a good place to spend my initial political power for the next tick. Uh, either manpower, so limited conscription, or military high command and an infantry expert. Oh, uh, as for occupation, we're occupying land now. Pick the cavalry brigade and set them to local police force. It's gonna be a lot easier to maintain control of the area. Oh, Kazim Orbe is in charge. So in this case, we could have delayed our justification, but you never really know, do you? You never really know. 
All right, in preparation of our fight with Turkey, we're gonna change this template a little. Uh, the more army experience you have, the better. You wanna fill out these last four slots with infantry, so you bring it up to 20 combat width. We cannot afford that right now, so I'm just gonna bring it up to 16. It's better than nothing. Uh, and I'm gonna delete a couple of these guys in the queue, just so we have some manpower to actually fill those divisions with. I'll need seven remaining to fill out this army. We'll train up some more boys once we get the manpower and equipment for it. And I'm gonna add a support artillery once we get the army experience. And once Turkey's in hand, uh, might as well research support companies, maybe motorized, and we'll see what we can do from there. We don't really have a lot to work with, so we have to improvise here and there. There we go, justification is finished. What we're going to do now is just declare. There we go. We're gonna let Turkey ram themselves against our line. We should be able to hold this with a little bit of minimal micromanagement and our air power. These are best split, so 50% covers the Middle East and 50% covers Iran. And then always have a couple in reserve that you can add airplanes to. There we go, Romania gets called in and our lend lease is starting to flow very nicely. Don't worry about the red bubbles. This is all mountains and they should not be able to break through, especially with air cover. The only risky province is down here because it's a plains tile that can be attacked from one, two, three directions. So keep shuffling units in there just until the Turks start losing strength. Give it a couple of weeks and those yellow bars start dipping hard. Turkey really doesn't have the industry to keep this war going. What have they got factory wise? Yeah, six military factories. That's not enough for those suicidal charges. As for Romania, don't worry. They will not send troops to Turkey. We'll deal with them later, but to deal with them, we have to first get down here to ideological fanaticism. Once we get there, we have a plan. If you get pushed out of one of these tiles, it's fine. You can still fall back to the disposition. It's hills, but it's uh, fairly defensible terrain still. Just slow the Turks down, keep them attacking you, and hurt them from the skies. I mean, most of our damage is going to be coming from our cast. Now, Turkey does have an air force, just not much of one. All right, political power. Hmm. I could get manpower. I need manpower, but I'm going to pick up manpower from the focus tree soon anyway. I, I can delay this without really needing the men right now. So I think I'm gonna get military high command and the infantry expert first. That may be a mistake, but I don't think it is. I could even turn these guys off and let that manpower flow back into the manpower pool if I really need to. Meanwhile, yes, our friends are being very, very generous. Like equipment wise, we're not even that bad considering we have one factory and infantry equipment. Ne never mind the airplanes though, it's, this, is, this is not... Uh, not a representative member of the actual situation. 12 seconds later. Hmm. I'm actually gonna cancel these lines, let that manpower flow back. I think I need manpower for my divisions in the field first. We'll leave a couple of these in the queue. As far as the actual battles are going, we're winning everywhere. We're, we're taking heavy casualties and a lot of attrition for some reason but that's probably because we're in combat. Anyway, uh, manpower reinforcement is happening. We should be fine. These extra divisions are gonna be helpful once they deploy. And we'll just queue up more divisions once we get ourselves some more manpower. We can already see Turkish bars dipping slightly everywhere. This is just gonna keep getting worse and worse for the Turks. And we just have to keep this going. Ah, five days ago we got our stuff. So I'll, I'll keep repeating this. Keep asking for lend lease. Every opportunity for lend lease you should take. Again, create massive deficits artificially and ask for guns. Always need more guns. Guns, fighters, casts, whatever. In hindsight, it would have been better to ramp up mobilization laws instead of uh, getting the infantry expert. Oh well, live and learn. Live and learn. It's fine. It's fine. It's mostly going to be annoying uh, because, well, the occupation is going to go poorly just because we cannot get our garrisons fully filled. But it shouldn't impact the run all too much. If you want to be more careful, feel free to just pick somebody else than the infantry expert. Like I said, manpower is probably a better choice here. Turkish army is uh, quite beaten up, if you look at them, um, they're out of manpower. So once we get some manpower, we are going to start a counterattack, recruit more units and just run right over them. Let's start our counterattack. Turkey really doesn't have any strength left. Most of their divisions are, well, pretty much destroyed, except for here. These guys haven't really been attacking, but the others are <laughs> barely at any fighting strength left. So it should be easy enough to push, create some pockets and just run right over them. And we have total air superiority anyway. I could probably just 
let my battle plan go at this point. Hey, first pocket, five Turkish divisions. Ideally, I wouldn't have to destroy too much of the Turkish army, but I don't want to risk it. They might get manpower again when they ramp up their recruitment loss. I just want to get this thing going. I think I'll just activate my battle plans and run right over them. It's been going on for far too long anyway. Never thought Italy would be our most useful ally. I'm gonna add a factory for support equipment so I can make some MPs. <sighs> this battle plan may have been the best idea I've had. <laughs> so I just picked the uh, silent workhorse now since uh, I'm getting a lot of manpower from military youth and militarism Don't need anything else. I could have gotten the army organization or fence expert I can get them later and the sooner you pick a silent workhorse the more he pays off anyway. Yay two more divisions encircled yeah, Turkish armies uh no fighting shape. All right, we have ideological fanaticism. Time for memes. We'll simply create a faction with the Bulgarians. Don't worry, this all makes sense. There we go, the dawn of totally legit bro. And Bulgaria is in our faction. We'll not call them in, not yet. Turkey should be capitulating any day. That's pretty much, ah. Simply take all states, perfect. And we're done. What we do next is call the Bulgarians in. While we wait for that to happen, we'll set up a line here-ish. Just an infantry army on these two tiles. You can uh, forego Edirn, it's a pretty terrible position to defend. And your spare divisions could go guarding the coastline, just in case the Romanians pull off an naval invasion. They're not very likely to, but you know, you never know. All right, we've called in the Bulgarians, and we're not gonna help them at all. I know, I know, we're not very good friends right now, but it's simply too good to pass up. We're gonna let Bulgaria fall, then we're gonna wait until we can actually kick them from our faction again, uh, so July 39. And when that happens, uh, there will be a quick peace deal between them and Romania. Romania is gonna annex them, and we're gonna take advantage of Romania being out of position to do some quick encirclements and destroy the Romanian army and end the war in a very favorable position. Now, I don't know why you can kick kick countries from your faction while being in the same war, but hey, if it works, why not? It's difficult enough as it is. I, I'll take anything I can get. Just gonna add military police to my cavalry, make the division also larger. The larger the garrison template, um, the less equipment it actually needs due to how it's calculated. Trust me, just make this as big as possible with as much cavalry as can fit and add military police. You'll thank me later. As far as recruitment goes, keep doing this, but it's gonna be difficult to get a deficit right now. Uh, so I'll just keep asking for whatever I can get, really. Of course, they won't send me guns because technically I don't need any. But I can keep asking for airplanes. Airplanes are nice. And there goes Bulgaria. So when July comes around, we'll be um, removing them from our faction. Meanwhile, we'll just defend this position. Wear out the Romanians some more. With our air force, we should uh, be hurting them quite a bit. Now, more political power to spend. Do I need manpower? Of course I do, but I still have a lot more to mobilize. So don't think I want that just yet. I have several percent more to go. Uh, could go to free trade. That's always a good deal, especially if you can get it early. Or I could start working on the army. At this point, I don't think it matters too much anymore. I'm just gonna go with the economy choice. Economy Economy wins wars, so free trade it is for me. Oh, it's already August. I almost forgot about our dear friends, the Bulgarians. So yeah, I'm gonna kick you from the faction. And, oh, bunch of land lease. There we go. Kingdom of Romania has annexed Bulgaria. That's just great. All right, I'm gonna see if I can still cheese this just to make it, you know, funny, very funny. So withdraw here, let the Romanians walk in there, then counterattack once they do something stupid, which they always do. The AI just doesn't know any better. All right, now we counterattack. Should be easy enough. Should be, yeah, they're breaking, they're breaking, they're breaking, they're breaking. Come on, come on. Hey, encirclement galore. We destroyed a pocket, we move north. I know, it's a little scummy, but eh, it is what it is. Now we counterattack with most of the Romanian army stuck here. They're really no threat. Can pretty much just let the battle plan go at this point. Finally. All right, there goes Romania. Great news. Um, could puppet these, could occupy these. It 
doesn't matter too much. I prefer puppeting, honestly. It's a cheap way to get at their resources. I don't have to garrison the territory. And in this case, uh, Bukovino, Bessarabia and Southern Bessarabia have been given to the Soviets already. So there's no real risk in doing this. The territories also are not required, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm just going to satellite Bulgaria. Maybe I can satellite Transylvania. More puppets is more better. Yes, satellite Transylvania. And then I'm going to puppet what's left of Romania. And we're done. There, now we have a bunch of buffer states to the north and they're already at the lowest tier of autonomy. So we get access to 75% of their military factories and they're all gonna keep doing their little focus trees. And now we divert our attention to the next one on the chopping block. Vichy France. We're also going to get rid of totally legit bro and we are going to join the Axis. We're not actually gonna do anything as an Axis member though. We're just gonna join and we're gonna park some troops close to Vichy France. Uh, some on the mainland and we're gonna park some troops in Syria. Now as far as Africa is concerned it's going to depend on how the game proceeds for you. In this case the United Kingdom is in control of North Africa which is perfect. We'll join the Axis, use that to get a free justification off on the Vichy French. Uh, we're going to overrun the Syrian provinces with ease. We're going to use paratroopers to drop into uh, a border province with Germany and then quickly rush our troops in and maybe do the same here with uh, Bizerte. Drop a paratrooper there and then rush troops across from Sicily, flood in there and just cap them that way. To defeat Vichy France you need the entirety of the mainland and I think uh, one or two bits of their Algerian holdings. So we'll just do that. That will secure us most of what we need and then it's just a matter of fighting the UK. The UK usually takes these islands. We need these. So once Vichy is dealt with, we leave the Axis again. We've got what we need and then we start conquering our way through North Africa. If we do this while in the Axis, every time we step onto a province that belonged to Italy, it's going to return to Italy. Um, this won't happen if we're not in the Axis or if we do not have military access with Italy. So we're going to avoid that and we're just going to conquer North Africa for ourselves. Now, if you're in bad luck and this is all in the hands of Italy, for some mysterious reason they've been competent, you're gonna have to fight the Axis. For that purpose, first of all, again, defeat the Vichy French, deal with them however you see fit, make sure your ports are garrisoned, make use of these northern buffer states so you don't have to occupy this land yourself and don't call them into any wars, any wars at all, and then you'll have to fight a brutal North African campaign. Uh, try to use infantry, Th they are relatively cheap. You could, where are we, train some cavalry for some quick encirclements in North Africa, it's, it's gonna be difficult, but not impossible. In our case, we are fortunate, so I hope the UK can hold on to this, and then uh, we can just conquer, let's see, the British states in Egypt, Middle East, and Eastern Med. So that's all of this here, so Cyprus, etc. Do we need Cyprus? I'm not sure if we need Cyprus. Uh, let's see, the Italian states, the French states, and last but not least, Afghanistan. Afghanistan is, yeah, it's, it's easy. It's the last thing you'll need. We'll conquer it when we get to it. Oh, don't forget the garrison this side you are bordering the British Raj. Just a little mad at myself that I forgot about paratroopers. I clicked the wrong damn button. Now, technically, I only need the one transport plane. I'm gonna make a few more. I'm also researching motorized. It might come in handy if I ever uh, launch my campaign in North Africa. Never know. As far as construction is concerned, I'm gonna focus on building military factories in my puppets. I wanna keep their autonomy down. Uh, that way I can also start using their manpower should I need it. And I am trading with Romania quite heavily for their oil. Ironically, I'm out of oil. All right, I've got five transports. I'm gonna scratch the production line. That's really all I need. Uh, rest is going into infantry equipment, improved artillery, a little bit into fighters and some more close air support. Don't think I need anything else. Might shift some factories to trucks for my North African campaign. That's gonna be it. Realistically, I, I don't think I'll be getting a lot more factories out of this anyway. Really not uh, an industrial powerhouse. All right, we finished our justification, but we need five more days for paratroopers. So we'll just wait for that. Don't need these Romanian troops though. Manpower is also fine. Uh, I think we've mobilized half a percent more and then I'll have to up my recruitment laws. Stability, yeah, st stability is not, uh, not great. Still, we're working on it. We are working on it. Okay, we've got our paratroopers. Uh, we'll change this one division over to a paratrooper. I'll change it back later, should I need it. Give you a paradrop order right here 
on the border. I've done the same thing in another playthrough. Um, <laughs> we're gonna take that tile and then allow our units to walk in there. These guys can just aggressively start walking. I don't expect much French resistance here. My air goes up over southern France. Close air support, air superiority. Slow the game down a little, just in case. And we will declare. And again, we'll not call the allies and they, they won't join anyway. Power drops, go. There we go. The power drop has started and it completed perfectly. Now we control that tile and we have access to this tile. So my units can just walk in there from neutral territory and we'll start our campaign. Occupy the south of France. And I'll move my transports in preparation to Palermo. As for Syria, yeah, we'll just walk to the port there. It's no big deal. Oh, Oh, France, no matter what form you take, you're always incompetent. Yeah, that's gonna get cleaned up nicely. This is already pretty much dealt with. I'll keep going down the focus tree. It'll, I'll eventually probably shift to construction engineering or suppress my subjects. Either one. Ooh, technology share. Nah, I'll not finish that in time. Get that later. And done. That is French Syria cleaned up. Pretty much all you need, really. Oh, France. Oh, France. Look at those divisions disappear. And... Boop. All right, power drop from here to there. That'll be fine, I think. Should work. <laughs> okay, so it did. And just get the rest of these divisions across as well. Shouldn't be too difficult. I know there's a French Navy around here somewhere, but I, I really don't think it's going to do all that much. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh... Yeah, we'll just have to spend the PP. Oh, come on, France. Admit it. You've lost. It's over. 100%. There we go. I need this. This I have to control. Now, I want to make puppets. I like puppets. Okay, so that's a bunch of puppets. Good. Now, as for Vichy France itself, um, they are quite annoying with their focus tree, but if I can annex them quickly, I can get control of their fleet, and I would like to get my hands on their fleet. What if I just satellite the Occitan Republic? So just southern France here. That would be nice. I wouldn't have to occupy the land. And then puppet Vichy France in Kerguelen. That's here. <laughs> ah, there we go. In theory, I should be able to get their fleet now. Manage subjects. It's gonna take a lot of political power though, but just to be able to get my hands on the Vichy French fleet might actually be worth it. So I'm gonna try to get their autonomy down as quickly as I can. As for the Axis, we no longer have need of their services, so we can just uh, leave this faction. We have no business with them anymore. Gonna make this uh, a little bit of a, a quick and dirty division for North Africa, uh, a motorized division with... It's, it's pretty much a 7-2 with motorized, so we want to maximize our speed and uh, limit the supply usage, so I'm not making this a 40 with, so I'll make a few divisions into this to make encirclements, and I should... I have the manpower and the equipment. No, I don't really have the equipment, but I should also be making a few 14-4s uh, to enable us to break the defenses of Britain in certain locations. All right, Japan has declared on the Dutch East Indies, and they'll be fighting the Axis, oh sorry, the Allies soon enough. Yep, they are fighting the Allies. All right, let's see if we'll uh, be able to join their faction. This is going to be very decisive. Hello there, this is me, Bittersteel in the current time. Uh, just here to give you a quick heads up. If you join the Japanese faction, you will end up in a non-aggression pact with Germany and Italy, potentially causing problems down the line. I got lucky, but let me just warn you ahead of time, it might be better for you to simply justify on one of the UK's puppets like Malaya and go that route instead of joining the um, Eastern co-prosperity sphere. Like I said, those non-aggression pacts can really screw you if you end up needing Italian territory in Africa. Anyway, back to the video. All right, Japan, let's see if we can hang out together. Oh, before we do, um, quickly go to Italy and we might want to cancel our military access. Otherwise, everything we conquer that used to be Italian land is going to revert back to them. Uh, not something we want. Join their faction. Now let some time tick by. Ah, uh, there we go. We'll immediately join their wars. And we are now at war with the Allies. Oh, you're now at war with the Allies. We'll immediately start all of our offensives. Not into India, though. India is just defensive in nature. The Greek border, we shore up our defenses here. We have got the British completely by surprise. So we are going to truck towards El Alamein as fast as we can. Take as many ports as we can on the way. The infantry can follow behind. 
mind. All right, we can take Q8 as well. And with that, in one fell swoop, we should be able to take most of the critical ports in the region. And then it's just going to be a slog to fight down uh, towards Egypt and into free France here. So North African campaign has begun. Wish me luck. Ah. That's, uh, yeah, that was to be expected. The US is in this, so hopefully we can use the speed of these trucks to really blaze past this. Uh, Japan's gonna ask us to fight the Chinese. I don't want to bother. You could. It doesn't really matter, but I, I just don't want to bother. All right, we control the Dodecanese. That's a good start. Just remember to garrison the damn place. And that is Kuwait taken as well. We're starting to run into some opposition, mostly American troops, but we are still catching them quite unprepared. Uh, having said that, I think there's troops arriving now that actually have some organization. Uh, still with our speed, we should be able to do more than enough damage to get some encirclements in. Oh, a lot of people joining. Uh, the Raj should be here soon as well. Ooh, land lease, yes please. The North African campaign's off to a good start. As for occupation, eh, still need a lot of stuff. Oh, nice encirclement coming up here. Ah! Some American. Di oh, never mind. <laughs> Americans. Americans are the bane of my existence. They always get in the way. Always get in the way. And of course, the one time you're not really ready for it, Britain has a billion divisions in Africa. I'll just have to micro this front. We can lower the autonomy of Vichy France. Click that button. Excellent. And we now have a fleet. With that fleet, we should be able to get uh, naval supremacy to naval invade Cyprus. Should be fine. Continue our campaign here in North Africa. The Americans are just... Well, you know how Americans are. Annoying. And this terrain is just really bad. But we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. North African campaign. Um, their numbers don't weigh as much. Uh, we can do it with strategy and troop quality. As for research, I should probably be researching naval invasion tech. My bad. No, oh, UK. UK, you've thrown everything away. I caught you completely with your pants down. Should probably start planning uh, my offensive against this one Italian province. If I can take that, it's over. The rest of North Africa is, it may not be going perfectly, but it, all in all, it's going fairly well. Uh, yeah, a lot of uh, reinforcements are arriving here now. I'll swing these divisions in that direction soon. Now, as expected, the UK is going to start throwing naval invasions around. We should be fine. I've got garrisons everywhere, and I can always borrow some of these troops to clean that up. New Persian Empire looking thick, boys. Oh, overruns. Just a few more allied divisions remaining. And that's it. If we can gobble those guys up, we are done in North Africa. And it's just that annoying Italian bit of land we need. Well, that and Cyprus and Afghanistan, but I'm not really counting Afghanistan as a threat. All right, I'm going to declare on Afghanistan. This is going to draw them into the Axis. Sorry, allies. We're going to try and overrun the Afghans as quickly as we can. Take the land and just set up a defensive perimeter against India and then redouble our efforts to take Cyprus. If we take Cyprus, then all we have to do is justify on the Italian. Oh, right. Non-aggression pact. That is a problem. Oh God, that's a huge problem. Didn't see that non-aggression pact. Oh, that wasn't there before. Oh, damn. He thinks I might have screwed myself. I will have to see. Hey, there goes Afghanistan. I am extremely bummed out though. Uh, I should have seen that coming. I should have seen that coming. That non-aggression pact isn't going to go away. Oh, that is so annoying. So the best we can hope for is for the United Kingdom to push up and defeat Italy. Uh, or for the Axis to, you know, fall to the Allies at this point. All right, naval invasion's off. Uh, let's hope the fleet doesn't uh, explode on the way like to keep it somewhat intact. Okay, okay, fleet's doing okay. Looks like we'll take Lima Sol and Nicosia. Great, send the fleet back to port. Y yeah, you've done your job. Right, good. So all that we still need. Nani? Oh, 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 oh. Oh God, so it turns out I was fretting over nothing. Uh, we need the Eastern Desert and Aswan but we don't actually need Khartoum for the Persian Empire. So with Cyprus taken and Afghanistan under our control, we're done. We're done. All I need to do now is click the button, recreate the Persian Empire. And that's gonna give us a lot of cores. Oh, Persian Empire, magnificent yellow color. And with that, we have formed one of the most difficult formable nations in the game with relative ease. And if you like this video, I promise you, you'll like the next one. I've picked it just for you. Thanks for watching.